YouTube Nation. Me and Vin TV, a.k.a. me, TV, a.k.a. Attorney at Law. That's right, and I'm just put me on the side right next to Harvey Birdman at this point. Look, we got a lot to get into because I need to smash another lawyer out the box. I've done this before. I'll have to do it again. But before I get started, all right, I want to say thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you guys for sending all information. A lot of you guys asked me a lot of questions this week that I wasn't able to get, uh, was it, get back to. Hopefully, I'll answer some of those in the video today. I don't want to leave anyone behind on this, all right? Also, I want to say this now. This lawyer we have talked about before, all right? I've done this too many times against this dude. I've smashed this dude too many times, but yet he keeps coming out. Well, today, he's put himself in a box, pretty much, and it's going to hurt him actually even worse than what he's already hurting. So for those who don't know what I'm talking about, because we got a recap, we already know that last week, Gamers in the industry won that court case. Well, Jack Thompson decides on July 3rd, right, Jack Thompson, again, decides to come out on radio and speak about his opinion on the matter. So let's hear what he has to say before I destroy his ass. Right now, I want to turn our attention to the Supreme Court yesterday. They struck down a rule banning violent video game sales to kids in, uh, in California. Here to talk about it with us this morning is our good friend uh, Jack Thompson from Coral Gables, Florida. Jack, welcome back. Hey. Walk, walk people through this story here, because this is something you have been fighting and, and talking about for, gosh, at least 10 years, huh? Uh, yeah, more than that. I lost my law license on this issue. I, I was disbarred for appearing on 60 Minutes twice. Wrong. You were disbarred because you abused your privileges as a lawyer, and you brought many unlawful suits to the courts, wasting time and money. That's why you are disbarred. Now, I'm sure the 60 Minutes thing didn't help, but that's not why you were disbarred, all right? So you're lying. So let, let's get something straight. Let's see the facts already in your opening statement. You sat here and said you've been doing this for 10 years, if not more, all right? 10 years, if not more, and you have not won one single court case against the video game industry. Not one. That's why you were disbarred. You kept tying up the court system, and you have to understand that you're sitting here lying, which shoots down your credibility. It should, you, in your opening statement, you already lied, and you want us to believe you. You want any parent right now to believe what you're saying. Look, you know what? Let's just keep going so I can make you look more of a fucking fool. The makers of the Grand Theft Auto game said in order to pr improperly influence juries, <laughs> when in fact uh, I was there warning the people, uh, like a town crier or like Paul Revere, that, that the school shootings are coming. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Are you serious? You just compared yourself to Paul Revere. What school shootings, Jack? What school shootings? Because last time I checked, school shootings used to happen even before Grand Theft Auto. So I want to know exactly where you're getting your information from. Violito says that uh, video games aren't interactive any more than reading a book is an interactive thing. Mm -hmm. You interact with the book when you read it. Now, this ignores the fact that um, when you play a video game like Grand Theft Auto, you're not just watching a woman get uh, raped. You are doing the rape. Lies! Lies and slander! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're accusing them of rape and saying it's a rape simulator? Look, 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 look. Let's get something straight here, all right? I've never... In all the times playing Grand Theft Auto, I've never seen rape in the game. There's hookers you can buy that, that buy, you know, pay to have sex, but no rape. That's the thing, no rape. So I'm trying to understand this, Jack. If you said that there's rape, I want you to make a video, since you like making videos, all right? We're going to get on that in a minute. Since you like making videos, I want you to make a video showing us on screen with the game where there's rape. I want you to show us, Jack, because you're, you're sitting here misinforming the public. And that pisses me off. So I want you to sit here and make a video. Since you have Grand Theft Auto, we've seen the picture of you holding up the, you know, the copy of the game. We've seen it. So you have the game. I want you to make a video and show us so they can shut us up on this issue. But you won't do that because it's not. It doesn't exist. What's What's even more shocking is that the three women on the court, all liberal feminists, Ruth mm -hmm. Bader Ginsburg, Kagan, and Sotomayor don't understand the objectifying of women and the rape training that these games do. And here comes the political banter. I mean, liberal. I mean, seriously, if you listen to everything he's saying, everything he's saying is in a negative context. So when he says feminist, he's insulting the very same women that he's supposedly, yeah, supposedly protecting from being objectified. Jack, what you fail to realize is that there are many things in this world that objectify women. I guess video games did this to these girls too, huh? Not
And that video was brought to you by, if you notice in the background, Paul Mitchell. That's right, all these fashion people who are targeting these little girls who are objectifying women, but Jack don't want to talk about that. So since he's too scared to talk about it, let's look into it a little bit more for a minute, okay? See, Jack, the fashion industry has always targeted little girls because they need new models. They need someone to push their fashion at a young age to get them started, just almost like the video game industry, how they get younger gamers, you know, before they can even think of themselves. That's all it is. It's all business. But what you fail to realize, Jack, is that since you want to be a champion of morals, you have to step up and talk about all these type of issues if you really want to talk about the objectifying of women. I mean, hell, Jack, they even have baby thongs out these days. That's right. You've heard me, people. Baby thongs. So as far as I'm concerned, Jack, until you speak out on other issues, you shouldn't even be taken seriously. Or we can go back to an original argument, Jack, and talk about parental responsibility because at the end of the day, it comes down to the parents. These kids that you keep talking about, 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, they're not getting it $60 plus out of nowhere, Jack. They're not getting it out of the air. These parents are giving them the money. That's what it comes down to. They're giving them the money or they're buying it themselves. For their children that's what you're not realizing because every time something happens you want to say it's not the parents fault it's video games fault all right that's what you're saying all right even though we have a great rating system in place you still that, that parents complained about and got you still want to ignore that see what you fail to realize that a lot of parents aren't fit to be parents and a lot of them are fucked in the head Insane, Jack. Don't sit here and tell me that none of these things are the parents' fault. Seriously, anyone who tries to defend that, there's something wrong. Go, go sit the fuck down somewhere. Seriously, go be taken out of pasture and shot. That's just, that's, that's despicable. It's horrible. But I don't see Jack saying anything about that. So let's see what else Jack has to say. They want your kid, and you know that I videotaped my 10-year-old going into a Best Buy. I remember. And he was able to buy Grand Theft Auto Vice City, no questions asked. That's still going on, according to the Federal Trade Commission. Thank you, Jack Thompson. What you unknowingly just did was just prove gamers right. You're saying, well, the industry's going after your kids. So does the fashion industry. So does the movie industry. So does the music industry and any other industry. You want to know why? Because it's part of business. So you just proved what gamers were saying all along. You're pretty much, video games are on the level of what? Of other medium of entertainment. Thank you, Jack. And because of that, because you just said that, I'm going to play devil's advocate for you. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to play devil's advocate. So bear with me, people. Here we go. All right, Jack, you believe that video games, as you said before, you believe video games are a direct link to violence, meaning video games make kids mentally unstable and turn them into killers, right? You believe that. All right. I'll roll with that. I'll play devil's advocate. You made, and I'll say this, you made your kid go into Best Buy and buy Grand Theft Auto and videotape it nonetheless, all right? Okay, you did that. You know what that means, Jack? Do you know what that means? Since you believe, and we're saying logically, in your logic, since you believe that video games are a direct link to making kids killers, you just put your child in danger. That's child endangerment. That's what it is, all right? And it's not the first time you've done it, all right? It's the second time, because in 2002, you did it with Grand Theft Auto, and 2007, you did it with what? Bioshock, meaning you're a negligent parent. Meaning, if this was in your logic and this was the law, then guess what? You would lose your child for child endangerment charges. You, you, would, you would lose custody of your child. See, you put yourself in a box all because you want to make a video to prove yourself being right when actually, technically, you're wrong. <laughs> what else, Jack? What else do you have left for me, Jack? You don't have anything. You know what? I'll let you speak one more time. Let's see where you go with this. They brought up this, um, um, I guess, analogy. They compared it to... 
uh, some of the some of the violence we've seen in in children's books. Hansel and Gretel kill their captor by baking her in an oven, or right. Cinderella's evil stepsisters have their have their eyes pecked out by doves, uh-huh. and you know the evil queen in, in Snow White is forced to wear red hot slippers and dance yeah, until, no until she's dead. Wa- no kid wants to be the evil queen. Whereas in the Grand Theft Auto games, your mission is to kill as many cops as possible, have yeah. sex with as many women as possible engage in oral and anal sex, deal drugs, and so forth, and, and you're the protagonist. You're not viewing someone acting out in an improper way. You're, you're the person doing that. You know, uh, I didn't see anywhere in the opinions uh, what I think is the strongest argument, and that is the U.S. military uses these games to do two things, suppress the inhibition to kill of new recruits, and also give them killing scenarios they wouldn't otherwise have. So if it has that effect on the military uh, personnel, and that if they know what they're doing, then why would it not have that effect on civilians? God, can you be any more of a stupid fuck, Jack? Seriously, I mean, it just goes to show you just how stupid you can really be. For you to sit here and say, nobody wants to play as the evil queen, this, that, and the third, won't you understand, Jack, that video games, that's why it's compared to books, are like fantasy, because you can play out those roles. That's why, Jack. It's called freedom. It's called freedom. Something that you don't like. And I say this because you go on to talk about how it's a murder simulator and you can deal drugs and this, that, and the third, and it's not right. Look, you have to understand that other parts of the world, people, I don't know where you're from, Jack, but other parts of the world, they do this, all right? People do sell drugs. People do shoot cops and this, that, and the third, all right? So for you to say that you're the protagonist and you have no type of responsibility, you have a responsibility. People who play these games know it's not real, all right? If that was the case, they'd be out doing it a hell of a lot more than what you see already. But you don't. I wish you would go down. I swear, Jack, because it, it almost seems like it's a culture clash at this point. I want you to go down to the hood, Jack. Yeah. I want you to go down to the hood and go down to the dudes who's hugging the block, selling the drugs. Go to them and say, I know why the reason you're doing it. It's because of video games, isn't it? And they'll laugh right the fuck at you and tell you get the fuck out of here before you get shot. Seriously, Jack, you make yourself look bad every time. And then you use the troops. God. Now, I said this before. I, I said this before about you using the troops and you using it because this isn't about morals or kids or, or the American way. It's not about that anymore, Jack. No, because that's what you've used this as. It's not about that, all right? This is to further your, your career. Because for you to sit here and say that, you know, the, the, the military uses these things for the troops, you know, to suppress killing. Why don't you understand what the military is for? It's for defense. And if you need to... Offense. It's that simple, all right? They call them devil dogs for a reason. They go into base. They sign up for that reason. They go into basic training and all these. They have all these situations. You're saying, oh, well, these simulators calm them down. No, they've had these things time and time again used in basic training. So don't sit here and tell me that they use these games to calm killing down because, as we all know, the military have the best psychoanalysts in the country, all right? That's what they use in psychiatrists in the country. That's what they use, all right? For soldiers. Are you going to tell me that a video game can stop, uh, was it, a soldier from having flashbacks from being in the war? Are you going to tell me that? Is that how they use to suppress things? Huh? How huh, Jack? Tell me. Because, like I said, this is not about, all right? This is not about military. It's not about kids. You're making yourself look like a fucking idiot to further your career, and you will use anybody, even your own family, to get further. You're a piece of shit. That's what you are. And you said all of this on the eve of July 4th, when we were sitting here celebrating our independence, celebrating our freedom, and you're talking about more censorship. Yeah, Jack, thanks for letting me know. But you know what, Jack, I got a little surprise for you because you sit here and say that video games, you know, they, they hurt kids this and third. Well, there's a report, link is in the info bar, guys. Yeah, link is in the info bar. There has been a report that has come out that says video games actually stop kids from doing drugs and drinking because they're too busy playing video games that they don't do go and do these bad deeds. Yes, yes. As much as I say honestly, I don't think the report's really that good, but it is a report nonetheless. End of story. Now I need to move on because Jack, you wasted my time. You wasted everyone's time here. It's time to talk about the actual industry. As you can see, I just defended the industry, but now as usual, the industry stabs us in the back right after I defend it. So let's get into this right now. Let's get into it right now, guys. Y'all know what time it is. Come on, man. This is, it's a joke at this point. It really is a joke. All right. Now, let's start this off. David Jaffe. All right. Creator David Jaffe is displeased with backstabbing and bullshit. All right. Apparently on his Twitter, he came out and says, now, I want you guys to listen to this. It says, I managed to avoid the politics of work life for almost 20 years. Get that straight. Managed to avoid. All right. I'm bringing that up later. 
I just always focused on the work. Not sure if it was because games are getting so expensive or the economy is so bad that people are more scared, remember that, and thus most desperate than ever to keep their jobs, but man, I've never actually noticed the politics and backstabbing and bullshit of certain types before until these last three months. All right, David Jaffe, I'm just gonna come out right now and say it how it is. You're a fucking coward. Let me get this straight. All these years, and we're talking five plus or whatever, politics has been changed in gaming. Many of us have stepped up, even before me, before I started doing these videos, many people on YouTube or whatever has stepped up and said, this needs to stop. Yet, you stayed in the background. That's what you did. You said you managed to avoid the bot for 20 years. So let me get this straight. You ran every time there was a confrontation. You managed to avoid, you purposely stayed away from it instead of being a man like the rest of us and stepping up in front of it and trying to stop it. That's what you did. You managed to avoid. So you're a fucking coward. You're scared. And then on top of it, you say, the economy is so bad that people are more scared and less desperate than ever. So a scared person is going to sit here and scapegoat other scared people. Are you serious, Jaffe? This is what you're saying. This is it. See, this is why I say you're a fucking coward. All right? And, and, and just because you drop a couple F-bombs or you curse, it doesn't make you a man. You have to step up and be accounted for. You could have helped stop this since you're so-called an uh, iconic person in this industry, all right? You could have stopped this a long time ago if you'd have spoke out. But you didn't. But you didn't. And now we are where we are today, all right? That's where we are now. So now you have the gamers. I swear you have no fucking balls. None whatsoever. You have no guts. Hell, there's teenagers, there's kids that are probably watching this video that have more balls than you at this point. This is a fucking joke. You're a fucking coward. That's how I feel right now. But that's not it, all right? Because after he said that, the press got on him and said that uh, maybe there's some problems there, you know, with Twisted Metal and carrying on, and maybe, maybe there's some development issues. Well, Jaffe tweets again, again, and says, Oh, for heaven's sake, my bitching about politics have nothing to do with Twisted Metal or the development of that game. Come on, press, stop. Making stuff up just because you were bored and or have no real ability to go chase a real story. Mind you, Jaffe, you're in the video game industry as it is. If they're not chasing a real story, because I don't feel video games are real stories either, all right? What you do is not that important. You make video games, all right? And I don't believe in gaming journalism either, all right? Let's just get that straight. But since we're on the subject, if you're going to sit here and knock down those video game journalists, then you're also knocking down what you do as a profession. Understand that. And here's what they're saying. It says, where do you people, and when he says people, it says P-E-E dash P-L-E, Get this crap. Yeah. Talk about childish. I cannot, I cannot make this shit up, people. I'm telling you. It's just ridiculous. All right? Now, I want to say that even after that, there's another link in info bar for you guys where he admits how fucking dumb he is. Yes, he's dumb. He doesn't notice things. He doesn't... Yeah. And this is the guy you want to give your money to. This is the guy. All right? Seriously, let's move on. All right? We also know, like I said, the industry just runs seriously every time there's some type of problem they run or they do something or they stab us in the back as we all know this week capcom has apologized for the resident evil uh was a data save lock we know this right now capcom has come out and said you know we didn't think that you know these conspiracy theorists would come out and say that you know that we were trying to stop the used game industry this and third so now you're calling everyone conspiracy theorists you try to say well we tried to just say that we had a pure product and we wanted you to play that pure product for what it is if you had a pure product, Capcom, you wouldn't be locking people down into playing your game, all right? You would give them the freedom to choose to play that product. That's what, how it's always been with games. We have a choice, all right? You don't force people to lock in the data. You're lying, once again. And you know what? I'll get on you guys later. But you're sitting here saying, it won't happen again. I guarantee you'll find a new way, once again. Instead, you know, instead of having these meetings where you have all these brains sit around and try to figure out how to screw gamers over, why don't you use those brains to make your games better? Oh, I'm just saying. Now, as we all know, PSN Pass is here. Yeah, and I'm very disappointed at this. And I'm not going to say I'm disappointed at companies. Yes, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm disappointed at them, but I'm also disappointed at gamers. Now, for those who don't know, the PSN Pass will be coming soon with Resistance 3. And I'll have some news on Resistance 3 in a minute, all right? But I want to talk about this because the PSN Pass is a joke. We've seen this with EA, and this is what really upsets me because I have a lot of some gamer testimonials here that we really need to get into. Because, like I said, this is about the stupid fucking gamers who didn't step up and say anything before. Like I said, we stepped up with Capcom last week and got them to back down. You can do the same thing with this PSN pass. So let's get into this, all right? It says, one gamer says, my problem is the issue of entitlement. 
you buy something, you want it all. It's yours, all right? It says grandma and mom won't know the ins and outs of all this past stuff, and it will be confusing and cause backlash. It says, but I agree. People will still buy the games, like me. So let me get this straight. You're going to bitch and moan about the PSN Pass, but you're still going to support this shit. I don't, I'm, see, this is what happens when you don't stick to your guns, when you have no type of integrity. And it's sad because, like I said, you can do something about this, gamers. This is why I always say, if we stand together, we will beat these things. But if we stay divided, we will not win. All right? There's a lot of us here who will speak for those who don't feel they have a voice. All right? That's why this is important. If we stay together, they have to, they have to kneel to us. They have, they, have to, they have to cater to us. All right? I'm not saying that they have to listen to us all the time, but when big issues like this come up, yes, they have to listen. All right? Now, it also says, another gamer says, so it is confirmed. It's publishers versus GameStop, you know, EB or whatever. It says, and we gamers get the crap end of the deal. Really, something needs to be worked out instead of screwing over the customers. Online should be free, and you shouldn't use it as a reward for buying the game. I agree. You shouldn't use a reward as for buying the game. You really shouldn't, because at this point, anything you buy used, you're actually paying for online, indirectly. You really are. All right. Even I guess some could even say this directly, but on a case by case basis, you are paying for online. So they're, like I said before, they're forcing you top dollar for a game you unknowingly know will be either quality or crap. And you're going to say, well, guys, we have we have gameplay to judge that. Ha, now this bill passes and I'll get to that later. All right. Now it says if they want us to stop trading in games, then make awesome games. All right, it says, that's a great idea. It says, but nope, just stick it to the customer. That's the way to go. It's our fault for buying, used, and trading, I guess. And that's the thing. They're taking the choice out of you gamers' hands, all right? Gamers go and find a better deal than what benefits them, all right? It's that simple. All these companies crying that, you know, oh, we're poor, this, that, and third. I told you before, Capcom, fiscal quarter year numbers, record numbers. So I'm not trying to hear they're, trying to, they're poor or they're trying to stop use games, all right? EA just spent $100 plus million dollars on uh, Battlefield 3 advertising. They're not hurting for money. Sony, a multi-million, possibly billion dollar company, they're not hurting for money, all right? So for all these guys to sit here and say that they're losing money because they use games, that's bullshit. I'm not trying to hear it, all right? Now it also says, as noted yesterday, this isn't the first time Sony has done something like this. Mod Nation Racers and SOCOM Fire, uh, Fire Team Bravo 3, both on PSP, required used game buyers to pick up an online pass from the PlayStation Store for $14.99 and $19.99, respectively in order to play online. These passes usually cost $10 from other publishers, though Sony obviously exceeds that figure. Once again, they're gouging. They're gouging. So like I said, new standard. New standard. Before you know it, well, $30, $40 online passes. Won't you understand, guys, that if you give these companies just a little bit of room, they'll take it. They'll take advantage of you every time. This is why I always say these companies don't care about you. They only look at money. And the reason Capcom backed down earlier this week was because they saw so many comments saying, well, I'm not going to buy your product. I'm not going to buy your product. That's why. Not because gamers, you know, they're loyal. And this and this really upsets me because last week, we saw this was it in the comments in my uh, was in my last video and a lot of you guys sent me so much mail saying judging by the comments in your video a lot of gamers are starting to show their true colors of how their company fanboys I agree I have to agree all right I have to agree because you have to understand you cannot back listen when I talked about Sony no one said anything when I talked about Nintendo no one really said anything to defend them you know you know talked about Xbox here we go See, what you see, what you fail to realize is that these companies don't care. They just don't care. And if you sit here and blindly defend these companies, then there's something wrong with you. You either with at this point, you're either with the gamers or you're against the gamers. And if you're for the companies, I don't care how favorite game, favorite company, if you are for the company when they're doing things like this and you back them, then guess what? You're a parody of a gamer. You're not a real gamer. All right? There is no way you should be backing these companies when they're sticking it to you. Really. There really isn't. Now, granted, like I said, even though I buy new, because I do, and I find a better deal, I have to go on Amazon or whatever, I buy new, but even I still call bullshit on this. It doesn't affect, it doesn't affect me as much, but it doesn't matter. It shouldn't be happening, and that's why I step up and say something. See, like I said, this is bigger than just your selfish wants or needs. That's what it is. It's bigger than that. You have to think about the person that's next to you, because if I support the person next to me, nine times out of ten since we're gamers in the community, they'll support me. All right, when times are tough. That's how it works. It's teamwork, people. But you keep letting these companies divide you. And if they divide you, then we all lose because they'll pick us off one by one. That's what they'll do. 
Another gamer says, this is great news. I've been looking for a new way to be nickel and dimed by a multi-billion dollar corporation. See, guys, gamers are stepping up, and guess what? They're being silenced. We saw this in IGN not too long ago last week. Was it again? You guys sent me so much, uh, so many messages talking about how IGN with the bill last week, how they were taking your comments and turning them into and, and marking them as spam. Yes, marking them as spam. I put it on the fan page, and then you guys went to work on the fan page over and said, yeah, they were marking as spam. And then later it started. Every comment was pending. Yes, because they're overseeing your comments before they let you post it. That's why. And it's funny because a lot of people are saying, you know, well, that's just IGN's way. No, it's not. How many times have you went to an article and you've seen so much spam to go buy Uggs or buy shoes or whatever in the comment box? Those don't get marked as spam. No, they don't. But your comments got marked as spam. Seriously, guys, understand. Capcom, like I said, we saw a couple weeks ago, Capcom was banning people for what happened with Devil May Cry on their forums. Like I said, companies are to going to extremes to silence intelligent gamers. They want to get rid of all the intelligent gamers, and they want all the stupid fucking sheep to come in, all the seals so they can keep throwing fish to them. That's what they want. <laughs> That's what you're failing to realize, all right? We have to stick together if this is going to work, guys. Seriously, there's, there's nothing else to it. Now, I will say this. Resistance 3, since because the PSN Pass will start with Resistance 3. Resistance 3 won't have Resistance 2, was it, their online eight-player co-op mode. No, no. It's only going to have, for what I'm hearing, two-player in-game co-op that's it that's it and the people of resistance 3 what i'm hearing now of resistance 3 they're saying that well the co-op mode is taken out so pretty much they're giving you less of a product now anybody who's played resistance 2 you know the online mode so the community is still thriving it is a great online uh, experience for co-op seriously they're pretty much downgrading their game as far as i'm concerned because you have to understand people play the single player but the longevity was with the online we notice now that they're gutting this, they're saying because gamers have complained to them, they said that well, if there's a big enough demand, we may bring back the online co-op, but it will be later and down the line as DLC. Mind just a couple months ago they said this. The game's not out yet, but they're going to bring it out as DLC. Guys, understand what's going on because we've talked about this before. As we know, 50%, 50, 60% in production, they start making DLC, purposely holding it back. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I know I've given you a, bad, a lot of bad news, but let's take a break and let's talk about some gameplay that I got. For those who've been asking time and time again, you know, quick time events, quick time events, we'll get into this in a minute. If you haven't seen it yet, Ninja Gaiden 3 gameplay. Check this out. Hayabusa, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All civilians have been evacuated. Any armed soldiers down there are fair game. The hostages are in the Prime Minister's residence, right? Yes. I'll monitor the situation and guide you from the air. So Ninja Gaiden 3 starts out with you, Hayabusa, getting a request for help from the Japanese Self-Defense Force, Ministry of External Affairs. Please! Uh, 
Now, from what I'm hearing, yes, we just watched that, and there are a lot of quick time events in it, but understand that the first stage is a tutorial mode, all right? The developers have come out and said that the whole game isn't like that, but let's be honest here, guys. It depends if you really believe them or not at this point. We don't know what to expect. I would say just wait and see what happens in the future. Let's see if they show us any other, you know, stages and see if, if they're actually lying or not, all right? But... It does look pretty interesting, all right? Now, I need to move on because I wanted to talk about this bill. I told you I would get to it, all right? Because this anti-streaming bill is just... Here, these are facts. This isn't conspiracy. This isn't conspiracy, Capcom. This isn't conspiracy, all right? These are facts. And this is from Hal Halpin, all right? So understand this. It says, This bill, as written, will apply to anyone who plays and posts their gameplay online, which is a huge percentage of gamers. It says it could also apply to pro gamers who stream, uh, who stream their gameplay for fans as easily as it applies to companies whose entire existence relies on streaming technology. All right, this also goes into Netflix, Gamefly, all that stuff. Yeah, it says, let's look at it this way. Any legislation that has no opposition looks like an easy vote to legislators. All right, it says, it looks, it, if it looks okay on its face and none of their constituents are against it, they'll likely vote for it. Simple as that. That means, for me, as we all discussed last week, how this bill is going to be very broad, this means they won't break it down. It means they won't look into detail. That means that there's no complaints. You know what that means? It means it's going to get passed with no problems. So get ready for that, guys. Also, in, uh, was it, in, in this whole bill talking nonsense, Capcom has signed a deal with Gaikai. Yeah, all right? It says, and as forward-thinking publisher who has had great success in the digital space, we are excited to be working closely with such properties. Now it says, no titles were mentioned, although the announcement notes that they will be available via Gaikai's recent launched affiliate network, access to many millions of gamers. I want you to listen to this part real quick, all right? Listen, to this. This, is, this is what's going to hit you. It says, in addition to availability through Gaikai Affiliate Network, Capcom's titles will also be enabled to stream inside Capcom-controlled websites. Yes, Capcom-controlled websites. You already know. You already know that they're banning people from talking. This means no bad reviews. That's what this means. This is a step forward for the company. Is it a smart step? Yes, it's a smart step. All right? However, against the gamers, <laughs> we're screwed. All right? Capcom will have zero, zero, all right, negative complaints about their games at this point if they get the control that they want after signing this. You have to understand this, guys. It's getting nasty. Also, on more nasty news, Patcher blames reviewers for Duke Nukem losses. What's new? What's new? All right, blame the reviewers. First, you want to blame the fans, then you want to blame the reviewers. Like, if it doesn't sell well, you blame the fans. If it doesn't sell well, you want to blame the reviewers. You never take responsibility for yourselves. We've said this before, it doesn't matter. All right, look, PS4 is coming in 2012, or they're starting production in two, end of 2011, something like that, all right? And may have Kinect controls, all right? That's the rumor so far, may have Kinect controls. So all you PlayStation gamers who made fun of the Kinect, get ready for next-gen video gaming. I don't know how anyone can be excited for that. I just don't understand that. Anyways, anyways, all right. Remember when Sony said that the PS4 wouldn't be coming anytime soon? I'm just saying, if you don't remember, link is in the info bar for you guys. All right, also, in some positive news, actually, Age of Conan. That's right, you know the MMO Age of Conan? Goes free to play. That's right, free to play. So, what was it? We just saw Team Fortress 2 last week, now Age of Conan. World of Warcraft is now free till you're level 20. A City of Heroes, Champions Online, DC Universe, you on the clock. <laughs> you really on the clock. I tried to tell you, but you don't listen. However, DC Universe did open up a cash shop, which I said they would do anyway, because they said they were going to do that, but it doesn't mean it's going free to play yet. But they're going to have no choice if this keeps happening. Seriously, all these MMOs going free to play? Yeah. All right, also. Nintendo is being sued, all right, for 3DS tech, all right, yeah, patent infringement. Now, I tried to explain this to a gamer, uh, was it uh, yesterday, actually today, too, in a different topic, and he called me an idiot, and it's that in third, I should make my own games instead of giving out advice. Obviously, he thinks I have the funding to make games. 
apparently. And I told him that you under, he has to understand that ideas can be patented as long as you put them in detail. He didn't want to hear that, though. He didn't want to hear that, all right? And then when you found out this guy was trying to say the same thing about movies, if you're, if you're a critic of movies, you know, you should make your own movies. If you're a critic of anything, you should make your own. But then he criticizes other people's videos and then becomes a hypocrite himself without having any of his own videos. You know what I'm saying? Hypocrite. Walking contradictions, people. Walking contradictions. Practice what you preach. Anyways, guys, I want to talk about this for a minute because I have to go back. We got to use a throwback vid real quick. I talked about this about fighting games because apparently last week you guys had a big reception about what I had to say about King of Fighters, which is great. Remember when I said this just about last year about fighting games? You were going about this the wrong way. If you want to milk your product, you should know. You should know. You should know. That the game, fighting games, and arcades go hand in hand. All right, I can't tell you how many times I've spent times, like I said, I used to be an arcade rat. I spent many times playing those games in the arcade. And then after six months, you say, hey, now it's coming to console. That's how you do it. Well, I'm happy to announce that King of Fighters 13 is dated, has a release date, October 27th in Japan for the PS3 and 360. Why do I say this? Because the arcade version came out in Japan a year ago, and now it's hitting console. So apparently, there's still some companies that know how to do this right. All right? I'm, I'm just saying. Now, guys, I want to say that, look, that's the end of today's show. But I really want to talk about this real quick because I have promised a couple of you guys that I would talk about this, all right? I probably can't get into too much detail about it. But a lot of you guys were angry and complaining and just coming to me about how Japanese games, they, they, don't, they only cater to themselves. You know, these companies only care themselves instead of becoming a worldwide market. As in, a lot of you guys said, you were having problems with the Sony uh, PlayStation controller because it's too small for your hands because you have bigger hands, which is why you feel the Xbox controller is more for you. You see that uh, certain games will not come over to the U.S. or any other part of the West because they want to keep it in Japan and you feel it's unfair. I feel it's unfair as well. Now, I will say that I don't have a problem with the PlayStation controller. My hands are fine with it, but I can understand how it could hurt other people's hands. What companies need to do is make it more of a worldwide market. If anything, that's how you start your westernization that's how you start not by making the games catering to big muscle men and carrying on that's not how you start start your web your, your westernization period all right start with your hardware first all right because a lot of people are complaining I'm, I've had at least at least 15 20 messages just this week on it all right and they, they really stressed it. they went into great detail about it and like I said even though I don't have a problem with it I felt I needed to step up and speak on their behalf all right guys so, that's the end of today's show. Like I said, the next trailer is something I'm really looking forward to. It's already out in Japan, all right? The demo is already out also in the Japanese PSN, but seriously, I'm really looking forward to this, and it's coming out very soon. Y'all have a good weekend. I'll talk to y'all later. I'm out. Have you ever had a dream where you died? You mean like where you're in danger? No, no, where you actually die. You're being killed or something. No. I usually do the killing in my dreams. Catherine! <sighs> Another young male victim has <sighs> been discovered. His body was in an atypically weakened state, inconsistent with known causes of sudden death. His wife, who he'd been feuding with, found him dead in his sleep this morning. That is all the information we have up to this point. I've sort of been having funny dreams, too. I've been having odd dreams recently myself. They say all the men who died were cheaters. Maybe we'll all wind up dead tomorrow, too. What? what the hell is this? There's got to be some reason why we were all brought here. What reason could there be? Why do we have to suffer like this? If we don't run, we're going to be killed. No, no, this is just a nightmare. I gotta get out of here. Whoa!